Hey guys, Timothy Roberts here. In this video, I want to talk about symbol shape, profile shape, and really do a study into a very particular symbol as to why it sounds the way that it does. What we're dealing with really is a, a, a super oddball symbol. And it's a symbol that a, an amazing drummer by the name of Tim Metz owns. It's an old K. And it's one that he has done videos on his channel about. And so now I have the symbol in front of me. Tim was kind enough to send it over because I'm working on a project for another customer about uh, replicating this kind of weird shape, but incredibly musical and incredibly interesting to play uh, sound. So let's dive into the symbol now. What we have is a 19 and a half old K. Um, it has some very interesting qualities to it. It's a very weird shape. It's got half of it's more, more curved. The other half's a little lower. It's got this pretty strong hook flange at the edge. It has uh, connected circles of lathing as opposed to a spiral. So obviously you, you bring the, 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 the lathe bit into the symbol and hold it in one place and then pull it off and go a little bit farther out, hold it in another place. So it's not a spiral, it's not spiral lathed. Uh, it's got an oblong bell that sits lower on one side. Everything about this symbol screams that it should sound like garbage, uh, but it really doesn't. It's actually incredibly fascinating how nice this symbol sounds and how, uh, how inspiring it sounds and usable. So it's not just a s silly, funky symbol that you could only use on your far right and hit it every now and then. Uh, it's a symbol you could actually gig with and as one of your main rides play it and and get the job done on the gig part of that reason is for uh, i would say is the age of the symbol you've got a, a you know obviously 60 plus year old symbol this time has really done wonders and really changed the bronze alloy so bronze has copper and tin in it and it's a kind of alloy that as when it's made, it's instantly trying to separate. So the copper is trying to find the copper, the tin is trying to find the tin. So when it has decades of time for that process to continue, what results is a, a, a brittleness to the alloy because the, the alloy is kind of separating. It's becoming more brittle, it's becoming harder. What this results in is a really nice dry stick definition on symbols like this, that if this was a, a new symbol, it would be completely wild like if I could if I could go back in time and uh, see this symbol when it was made and play it when it was made it would be completely different we would have a wild crazy out of control symbol that uh, is incredibly hard to contain has lots of gong like tones lots of spread and wouldn't be super functional um, which is probably a reason why it has so many rivet holes <laughs> I haven't counted them yet, but let's we can do that really quick. Oh, I see. So 10, it's got 15 rivet holes in it. Uh, and you know, at one point, I think Tim said he had all 15 rivets in it, uh, which would be a way to kind of dampen down some wildness, dampen down the craziness that, that it has. Uh, and so currently, Tim obviously has taken all, out all of the rivets. He says he loves it without rivets. I tend to agree. Uh, it sounds very, very nice because of the age. So let's talk a few specifics, but first, let's hear how it sounds.
All right, so as you can hear, it's controlled. It's a little chaotic. It's got hums. It's got a very short crash. A lot of that has to do with the, the flatness up near the bell and how this section here, being that it's flat and uh, a little bit more on the loose side, it's kind of dampening the overall sustain and, and spread of the symbol. If the symbol had more of an uh, even curvature all the way up to the bell, then the, the, the sound would be able to propagate up and down easier. This flange that's out here at the edge is kind of acting a little bit, uh, it's like a very, very mild version of how a, a swish symbol with the flange it has, how that contains spread. It's kind of a version of that. It's so if you've ever seen like a reverse china that has kind of it, di the sound dipping or the shape dipping up before it hits the bell, you get a similar characteristic. So it's like adding in just a, a touch of that flavor to the sound and it allows for the symbol to have a really choked uh, aggressive in and out crash which is really really nice so it's like you can play louder or faster um, louder and faster patterns and the spread is not going to build up and the symbols not going to run away from you uh, I find that playing in this zone right here is where you get the most stick definition because it's like I said before it's kind of billowed out in a way uh, towards the stick and, and as you play up here you start to hear much more tones so if I take a uh, so I'll take the SD2 Bolero stick which really draws out mid-range and warmth and uh, mellowness if I play this stick and I play up near the bell and I dig in you're gonna really hear some gnarly t tones going on the sound's gonna open up in a kind of a crazy way. Whereas if I bring that tip down into this zone where the shape is a little bit more conducive for stick definition, I'm gonna get a much better, more cohesive sound where the stick is sitting out on top. Versus It's even hard to play the fast patterns because this this area is soft and it's like I can almost feel the metal giving. So to have the bounce, so it doesn't even want to have the it doesn't have the same bounce in this area that it does in this area uh, because of of the way the tension and the stiffness is set up on this particular ride. Tim Metz plays it with a nylon tip, which the nylon tip brings out more articulation and more highs. So even up in the crazy playing area, you still have a little bit more articulation that's going to help that stick definition sit out on top of those kind of hum and hums and spread that's kind of starting to build in this area. Then like I said, the bell on it is low and kind of oblong. You get some different tones depending on where you hit. And the transition is not super hard, so you do have some integration going on. I can play on the bell and you can hear this soft area activating. With a little bit of hums and tones, but you know, this is, it, you know, age, like I said, has mellowed it. This is a, is a rather blended kind of complex wild symbol. It's blended. It's not, that, that hum that's here is not sticking out. Uh, it's not loud in the mix. It's kind of buried in the mix, which makes it a usable symbol. This is a, this is the most funky yet functional symbol I think I've maybe ever played uh, in my life. So uh, very, very interesting, very, very cool sound. And I'm going to see if I can uh, make a symbol that gets close to this vibe. I am going to be making some tributes to this symbol. I am not going to try to go exact for the you know the exact shape, the exact weight of this symbol because I have to think ahead a little bit about 
how to design in some elements that are going to simulate how the symbol sounds now versus how it probably sounded when it was first made. Like I said, when it was first made, this symbol was probably super wild, but the age really has kind of contained all of that spread and sort of buried it underneath this really nice dry stick definition. So as a symbol maker, when I'm, when I'm approaching making a tribute to this symbol, I'm going to really be thinking about how do I tweak the elements that the symbol currently has to give it uh, the character that it has now given the age. So what I'm going to do with that is probably, I probably won't go as flat up near the bell here. Uh, and if I do, I'm really going to be building in what I call invisible strength. So it's not really going to want to dip in. It's going to be kind of strong and flat rather than just flat and, you know, kind of dipping. Uh, I'm also going to be adding artificial patinas. I'm going to be doing maybe some stuff with topography and the way that I hammer it to kind of give it a little bit more dryness and simulate the kind of age that, that this symbol has. Uh, there's also burnishing techniques and various techniques that I can use to kind of harden the outer crust of the bronze uh, and, and give it, you know, really I'm going to be aiming at stick definition, really trying to get stick definition in this symbol because uh, the way it's designed normally in a new symbol uh, is not prone to being nice on the stick. It's prone to being really hummy and honky and crazy. So uh, let's take it out to the shop. And I'll pull some blanks. I'm going to be pulling some totally flat blanks, hand forming the bell because this bell is super oblong. If I used a pressed bell, it would be too clean sounding. It would also be a little bit too tall, which would give it too much volume. Uh, so I'm really going for like a lower shape that's a little bit oblong. So I'm going to have to hand form the bell, hand form the body, and uh, we'll see how close I can get to this incredible Tim Metz old K.